Howdy, everybody. Kim Armstrong here. It is noon mountain time here in Boise. And I'm just going to give it a few minutes, just maybe a minute or so, just to give folks a chance to uh, get dialed in. I know it always takes a few minutes to get going. So I'm going to just give it a second to let things catch up here. And then we'll get rolling. I think I see about 36 attendees right now, give or take. And I imagine more folks will be dialing in as we get started. So I'm going to wait one minute and then we'll go. And we are going to record this, so we'll have it posted to the IFTDIS website um, not too long after after we finish up, probably next day or two. And uh, everybody will be able to get a follow-up email with a link to that recording and some other information. So. All right, so welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. And we're excited to show you what we have um, released in the last uh, month or so. And I think you'll find this to be a fairly useful part of our application, if you did. Um, I've been working on this one for a while and I think it's got quite a, quite a variety of uses. And we're gonna show you a couple different uses today, but my guess is after you see it, you might think of other things that you can use it for as well, so things that we maybe even haven't thought of. Um, so let me just do a quick introduction and then I'm gonna um, shut my webcam off because my internet can be a little bit slow. Um, I wanna make sure, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Caroline Bree, is that, are we sound okay? Yes, I can hear you. Yep. Okay, great, excellent. All right, so um, I am gonna go ahead and put my screen into presentation mode here. Hopefully that will work. Go screen. All right, I'm going to kill my web camera because it does slow the world down. Okay, there we go. All right, so myself and then Caroline Noble, uh, Center Picture, and Bree Schuler are going to present a few things for you today. Caroline's going to do a demo. Um, of how the application works with our compare weather feature. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use uh, this compare feature in our um, in prescribed fire plan. And then Bree's going to talk a little bit um, briefly about how it could potentially be used for some NEPA um, reports and documents and things like that. So that's sort of what our agenda is for today. And uh, just a few housekeeping things. Um, we're going to keep everybody on mute. If you have questions, Josh Hyde has joined us and he's going to be monitoring um, the chat box. So if you have questions, thoughts, comments, feedback, whatever it might be, um, please throw that information into the chat and we'll try to pick up the questions as we go. Um, and if, if, if there's something, someone makes a really good point, we'll, we'll, we'll try to address that during the presentation and we can always pick up a few questions at the end as well. Um, I did upload a few handouts to the um, webinar. So if you see in your in your little control panel, there's a handout tab. And I think there's four handouts I uploaded. These are our flyers for our different releases that we've done. Um, more or less just to give you an idea of some of the different functionality that's been released in IFTDIS over the past um, year or so. And uh, you can share them with folks. They're just PDFs that you can download. and pass around, it, they've got links in them and, and stuff. So it's kind of a, an easy way to share information if you have colleagues and stuff that might be interested in some of this. Um, let's see, did I have anything else? Oh, at the end of the webinar, we're gonna launch a survey. There's a five question survey and we're looking just for some feedback, information, thoughts um, on users, how people are using IFTDIS, what you might like to see in the future. Um, so anyway, that, that survey will pop up when the webinar ends and feel free to fill that out for us. Um, we'd love to get that feedback. We're always looking to hear from our users. So if you wouldn't mind taking a minute for that, that'd be great. Okay, I think that's it on the housekeeping department. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, I'm gonna try to make sure my screen will 
advanced, which there it goes. I think I've got a little bit of a delay. So I'm going to try to remember that as I click through things. Um, I just wanted to show a quick snapshot of the homepage that it, as it stands today, and this changes often as we add new things. Um, over here in the far left side in the orange, we've got our new compare weather, um, which is, gives you all the information you might need if this is the first time you've seen it. Um, we have a video that Josh put together that gives you a little overview. And then we've got quite a bit of information in the help center um, as far as getting started using it for the first time. And then, of course, up in the upper right hand corner, um, in all of the screens in IFIDES, you can always get to the user support um, tab and the, the help center, um, which contains, of course, all the online help content. And then everything with, from our YouTube videos, our recorded webinars, um, and our support forums. So keep that in mind if you ever need to, to dig up a little information. That's the best place to track it down is up here in the uh, user support um, place. And then I also wanted to remind everybody, if you didn't already know, we, um, Josh led the effort and built an overview um, online course for IFTDIS. And he just recently updated it uh, with all of the new screenshots, so materials current in there. And it's available on the Wildland Fire Learning Portal. Um, so if you haven't checked that out before, um, it's a great place to, you can easily get an account. And then the, you can see here it says on-demand self-enroll courses. And all these classes here on the right-hand side of the uh, login page are open. You don't have to have any special registration. You can self-register, and uh, IFTDIS is, is in that category. So feel free to check out the online um, IFTDIS course. It's, it's really great kind of overview of all the different pieces, and then it links you to some of the other information if you want to dig a little deeper into the application. So I was... I uh, want to point that out to folks and share that around if you would. Um, I know the Learning Portal is new to a lot of people, so um, definitely give uh, give that some thought if you're if you're looking to learn more. And then the last thing I want to just mention, just sort of as a reminder before I turn it over to Caroline, is IFTDIS was, was really built for this type of presentation we're doing today at this unit and the project scale. So we've got other tools that work at the national and the regional level. And uh, I think this compare weather feature really brings home the, the work at the unit and the project level. So I think you'll see some of the examples we show you fit nicely into that. Um, keeping in mind, we can do up to three and a half million acres as far as drawing a landscape and running models in IFTDIS. But um, we're really gearing things with IFTDIS down to that, that user level at the project unit level. So I just wanted to remind everybody of that before we jump into some examples. So I think that's it. Any um, questions um, so far, Josh? Are we good to jump over? We'll have Caroline uh, start in on, on her demo. Uh, much questions so far. I just posted uh, the website that we'll upload this webinar to when it's recorded. So, awesome. Other than that, good to Great. All right, Caroline, I'm sending it your way. And as soon as it pops up, I'll let you know. OK, got you. Got your screen. Is it the IFTDIS screen? It is the IFTDIS. All right, <laughs> that's always the hardest part. Um, OK, great. Thanks, Kim. So I'm going to get, go ahead and just demo within the application today. Uh, I'm going to go kind of slowly. Um, this first part of the presentation, uh, I want to focus on refreshing any existing users on the basics of the structure of the interface of IFTDIS and then um, the workflows. The good news is that you really can't break it. You can't mess up. You, there's more than one way to get from one place to another within the application, but there's there's really no fatal errors um, other than maybe deleting. If you delete something, it's gone. But in terms of navigation, there's no fatal errors and there's plenty of um, messaging to help you um, figure out uh, how to get to where you need to be if you're not sure. So the first thing I want to do, this is the, um, the home page or the landing page, which has this if you just cycle on it, which is designed um, when the application was built to represent the different things a user um, in fuels management might do. So it starts at the higher level with landscape evaluation, um, 
looking specifically at the landscape and then the strategic planning gets into some landscape uh, analysis and, and implementation planning gets more into the, the treatment planning level. Uh, the, the monitoring and reporting portions are not yet very well built. And then there's a map studio um, at the center of it all because everything is spatial in the application and based on a map. So at the top, which is called the navigation bar, you'll see that these kind of uh, mirror some of the petals in this cycle or the, the teardrop kind of things. So I just want to show you kind of quickly, uh, this cycle is not interactive, but if you click on the one called the cycle, you get a smaller version of it that is interactive. And within each petal on the cycle, um, there's cards. And as you hover over each card, um, you get a description in what we call the right-hand panel in gray there that tells you a little bit about what's going to happen if you click that card. So the uh, comparison functionality that we've built, um, it's in a couple of different places, as are many things. And if you just see, you can get to it in more than one way. Uh, you can get to it through um, strategic planning, this is where all the risk analysis and exposure is. So this is the most scary looking um, portion of the cycle. Um, but compare weather is here. You'll notice that we also have future development on a bunch of uh, cards for other compare functionality that is um, we're hoping to build uh, in the semi near future, comparing landscapes, comparing exposure, comparing risk. But compare weather is live through either the strategic planning portion or if you go to the implementation plan and compare weather is also on a card here. Um, and implementation planning is kind of nice in that if you're a, a new user or a user just kind of doing this for uh, project treatment level um, burn planning type of work, it's a one-stop shop where the things you'll need to do the compare weather are right in here. You can create your landscape, edit your landscape and model fire behavior. All these cards are right in place so you don't have to wander around these looking for the right place, you could go straight to implementation planning if you know that's what you wanna do. Uh, the other things in the navigation bar I just wanna show you because you'll need them are um, the playground, uh, which is where you run the model. So if I click the playground, it takes me to the same place as if I click on a model fire behavior card. So you go to the playground and this is where you actually provide your inputs to run the models. So, um, it's a fairly straightforward workflow. You select the model to run. There's currently three models within IFTDIS, the landscape fire behavior, which is um, fire behavior at the pixel level. Each pixel is uh, calculated independently. Um, we now have a spread model. It's uh, MTT or minimum travel time fire spread. And then landscape burn probability, which is um, using the MTT random ignition and we'll, I can show you briefly examples of each, but the focus today is just on compare and with compare weather, you can compare any of these models. Um, the other important place to know about, um, well, let me just say when you're in the modeling playground, um, you can see it gives you your run name. I can just show you when you click a model and say create run, um, you start populating the various inputs and just walk through name it and run it. Um, and then once you've completed your runs or the status will be listed here, um, the model name. If you just select one of your runs, you'll notice the right-hand panel populates with information about your run, like the landscape, all your inputs. You can also filter here to just a certain model type if you just want to show, um, for example, landscape burn probability run. So quite a bit of functionality right in the modeling playground, including when you expand the run by selecting a row, um, copy, view input, which is kind of cool. It lists your inputs, which is um, similar to what's in this right-hand panel, but more friendly for a screen capture. Um, you can download it to use in an external application. Delete or view on map. So the workspace on the navigation bar, again, up top, is kind of like your um, Internet Explorer. It's where all your files are. So the playground is just for your model run outputs. When you come to the playground, it's everything. Um, you can control this pretty well by creating folders, putting files in folders, um, renaming folders, deleting folders, et cetera, as well as all these filters on the left-hand side um, that help you find the guy. Just want to look at my um, reports. I can just click on report and then it lists the types of reports. So I could 
go down a little further and just look at my landscape reports, for example. And I'm showing you all this because uh, the way we've built the workflows is you have to have done certain things before you get to compare weather. Um, so I'll show you an example now of how that interface works. So if I go back, um, say, to the cycle and go to that implementation planning and hover over the compare weather card in the right-hand panel in gray there, it tells me a little bit. It tells me what I want to, might want to use this for, for prescription development, for model calibration, um, or for building various scenarios. And then below that, it says, you know, I can do it for any one of these model types. You have to have at least two, and they have to be run on the same landscape. So what we're varying is indeed just the weather. Um, and that weather is reflected in the model output. So when you click on the compare weather card, ta-da, you come to this full screen. Um, and again, on the right-hand panel, it kind of helps you uh, understand what you need to do when you're in this workflow. But there's a little paragraph here that reminds you you have to have some completed model runs to do this. If you don't have any, um, you get sent pass go back to the playground. You just click on playground to run a model. If you're in the playground, um, you'll need a landscape. Um, in order to run fire behavior, it'll tell you that. So that's where you have your workspace. You know what you've already built, and you come here to begin comparison. So the first step is simply choosing what kind of um, model output you want to compare. We have all three selected here. So let's just say I picked that landscape fire behavior one. Um, it opens up the next input level, which is, um, OK, pick the one you want to compare against. Pick the first, first one. Um, Oftentimes, I'll use the uh, auto 97th, which is a feature we have in IFTDIS that just um, does an automatic run um, at 97th percentile for a given landscape uh, based on a, uh, a weather scenario that's from the center of the landscape. It's just a starting point, and I can demonstrate that using compare weather. So here's an auto 97th run. I pull it up. I think this is from the, the Fish Lake National Forest. Um, and then this automatically expands the next one. Um, the system is looking for what other model outputs I have that match that landscape, and it's listing them for me right here, and they're available for me to check. So you'll see number one, my first selected one has got a little padlock next to it. I can change that if I go here and just pick a different one um, right away. You, and you can also use clear form once you've got a bunch of things selected. So you can work within here. Um, but let's just say I pick one, and yeah, I want to look at these next two. So for example, I ran Auto 97th in this area. I didn't think it was very good. I looked at the inputs, so I went to Fire Family Plus and got what I consider to be the better values, and I want to look at those. And then even the uh, Fire Family Plus values, I didn't think were really um, great, so I bumped up the wind a little bit. Um, and I want to look at that too. You'll notice as I'm doing this, um, this pending select, uh, compare selection is populating um, and we're getting thumbnails for each of the model outputs. Thumbnail has the model um, name sort of in white there. Um, and then you've got a couple of choices. You can choose which output you want to look at. It's defaulting in this case to flame length, but I may want to choose, say, crown fire. And the thumbnails will update and show you these different outputs. So this is a really useful way, other than having to swipe, um, that you can just quickly say, OK, if I do a little sensitivity analysis and change a weather parameter, or I can show you also a model parameter, um, how is that going to implement, influence my fire behavior outputs? Uh, you can also put an area of interest um, on top of it and just get some quick hash marks to kind of see an area that you might be looking at. In this case, I think it's a district boundary. So we can sort of see right away, oh yeah, a lot more crown fire when I when I did the wind up a little bit higher. And then further, if I scroll down in a tabular view, I've got all my inputs listed and they're aligned with these thumbnails so that uh, I can see what I was varying between these inputs. So for example, um, anything that's a straight uh, horizontal bar all the way across was constant. So if it varies, um, there's a little line between them. So between the first output and the second output, for example, um, I had the same uh, landscape, wind type, land fire version. Um, 
the winds were the same. Where I did the variation on that one was uh, the herbaceous and woody fuel moisture is different a little bit on this one. Um, they both have the same weather conditioning, conditioning period, 110, 100 hour fuel moistures. And then on this one, the wind was higher, 23 miles an hour um, southwest. So you can see just at a quick glance how these different tweaks of your inputs are influencing your outputs. And these can be um, captured in a variety of ways for different purposes that Kim will sort of illustrate some examples of how you might want to apply these in your different day-to-day -day work. Um, the other exciting part of this is you can uh, take this now to a map view. So you can click here where it says view on map or like other pieces of the application that have more of a split screen, this, this globe will also take you to a full map. Either way, it takes you to the same place. And those thumbnails come with you. So now that's available at the top of the map. You can collapse it if it gets in your way. And you've also got this handy return to form button here. You can return to the form using this arrow as well. They both do the same thing. Um, so now I've automatically got um, the three model outputs that I'm comparing listed in my layers list. Um, they're all checked and they're, they've got the word compare in front of them, uh, just so we know that these are uh, being used in compare. If I were to pull up the um, outputs for these models, they would look the same in this case, where they're gonna differ is landscape burn probability. So that's why we've appended the compare in front of it. Um, these thumbnails are active um, within the application. So if you click on one, um, it'll bring up the one that you've selected. So this is the auto 97th run without you having to mess around in the layers list. If you click on um, you know, the other one, it'll switch to that. Similarly, again, if you click um, to change the model output to display, it will automatically change that in the map for you. So you can interact with it. It's just kind of a, a quicker way to do a lot of um, glancing and seeing what you wanna look at within these outputs and thumbnails. Uh, you also can still, um, interact with the layers list. For example, if you wanted to bring up your landscape to see, you know, what's going on, why, why am I getting, you know, more, more red um, or a higher flame length in some of these areas, you could just bring up your landscape by selecting landscape tools, filtering by map extent, bring on that landscape. Um, and then we have the, for example, the swipe functionality where you can sort of zoom in and ask yourself, okay, what's going on in these areas? What fuel model is causing these? We have, you know, an identify tool that sort of would help you hone in on some of that. And you could scroll down in your list and, and see what the uh, fuel model is. That's not a good choice. That's a timber litter three. But if I turn that one off, um, you, you could begin, as you can imagine, to just toggle on and off and look at these different layers. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else I should show you guys. Again, there's the return to form. Does anyone have any questions thus far about this, the interface and the button clicking um, and how this works? Got one question so far on auto 97th weather. Uh, did the auto 97th weather in your example using the same raw station that you selected when you used Fire Family Plus? Uh, I don't remember, to be quite honest, is my answer. You can see what weather station was used um, in your Auto 97 by looking in the right-hand panel of the workspace, if I find that one. Um, Hey, Caroline, this is Kim. While you're looking for that, I will add to that question. Um, in issue this, we, we can't at this point in time select the raw station that we want to use for the auto 97th um, uh, run. We hope to in the future be able to pick our raw station, but we can't do that right now. So it would be whatever the uh, you know, whatever the RAWs that was selected based on simply on geography and location to the to your landscape. 
Yeah, and I would not Thank rely you. on those Auto 97 runs at all. Those are intended just to show what this application can do. And now with Compare Weather, it's the perfect um, sort of example to see, okay, I've got a quick and dirty run. I can see immediately that it's showing, you know, not enough or too much um, spread from what my experience or knowledge tells me. I need to go back and, and populate that with some better values, and then you can, you can adjust it and see. I'm trying to pull up what station it is, but... I don't want to spend time on that, but um, the answer is I don't remember if I use the same or a different Auto 97 station for, or weather station for that. Any other questions on the, let me just show you also in the um, workspace while I'm here, the compare weather is its own thing listed in the workspace. Um, and then you can filter by model run types within it. And if you select the compare weather, um, within the workspace, um, you have a choice of viewing the input. So that shows that table that we were seeing earlier. So this is you know, pretty simple to screen capture. Um, you can also um, select copy or edit. Um, when you do that, for example, it opens back up what you had, but you can um, you know, change the models that you've got in it. I could remove one and save this again under a different um, you know, set of um, comparisons and then retrieve that easily from my workspace. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you in compare. So let's say that I'm in there. As you're looking at your thumbnails, if you glance down at the table and see that you made a mistake, like, oh, shoot, I may meant to, to make that, um, you know, woody fuel moisture higher. Um, you can just sit copy run, and this will take you back to the playground. You're gonna have to run it again, but it'll pre-populate with the existing inputs. So you just have to change that one parameter. You are leaving um, this compare page, so it gives you a little friendly warning like, yes, I know I'm leaving. And now you can see it's it's got pre-populated the name with copy. I wanna go in and just change my initial fuel moistures and say, you know, whoops, I meant to do that um, with a higher one rename it and run it again. And as soon as that run is completed, um, when I'm back in that compare uh, weather menu, that run will be available to select and add to my list of comparisons. So it might even show it is um, working, but once it's, you can use this refresh button um, and once it's done, it would show up as a choice in your pick list. So I guess I'll ask if there's any other questions. And during that time, maybe Kim, you wanna grab the screen and start talking about some of the applications. Um, so I've shown the button clicking yeah. and build the resources and you can show um, ways to apply it in your jobs. You bet, I will do that. And there's a couple of follow-up things that Josh is gonna cover here that came in as far as questions. Well, I'll yeah. set some things up here. A uh, couple follow-up questions. Uh, the first is asking if we could show how to upload the Fire Family Plus weather file uh, that was used. And I'm about to link to that one the uh, help documentation on uh, uploading weather stream for fuels conditioning. That's currently uh, the most weather upload we can put into uh, the system. So I'll put that in there. And then on the compare, uh, oh, sorry, let me find that question again. So on the compare, are the summary statistics calculated between values of each in a table or map? Other than the table or map, that shows in the interface? So I can answer both those. Let me start with the second one because that's um, easier, I think. I can remember it better. Um, we are in the process of building reports. So right now, the only uh, comparison you have is that, that table and the map view and the thumbnails. Um, we decided to go ahead and release that before the reports were done because we feel like there's a lot of value in just the table and the thumbnails um, and the comparison reports are uh, under development. So that answers that one. You might even notice a grayed out uh, generate report 
button. I don't think that's there yet in the workspace. And if the first question was that on the Fire Family Plus, Josh? That's correct. So there is no link between Fire Family Plus and Ifcetus, uh directly. There, if you link that help content, um, you can use it to condition, but there's still work uh, required manually for you to do in Fire Family Plus to get the values you need at this time. And we can um, provide a little bit more information on the process for doing that if, if the person asking the question wants it, but the, the, the short answer is they're not linked. Yeah, so just to, Those, that's um, from our good friend Chuck up in Missoula there, Caroline. Oh, and, okay. Uh, I know that guy. And Chuck, we can follow up a little further too if you have some further questions. But yeah, basically Caroline would just run Fire Family Plus, look at what the values are, and then manually type them into the model run um, and hit run for fuel moistures and, and wind and such. So that's how that The, the auto 97s yeah. are derived we have help content on it but it's it's from the raw station nearest to the center point of the landscape um, as approved as a weather station in Woofdus circa 2016 um, so it's it's imperfect to say the least but it's it's something to get the ball rolling Great. Thank, actually, thanks for the delay there because um, it took me a bit to get my computer to cooperate and get my screen showing. So, so what I want to do now is, now that you guys have seen how the compare weather works as far as running the model, using the compare feature, and then clicking things on and off to look at them, I just want to go through a couple things on how to sort of apply this to a burn plan, which is a lot of what um, a lot of people ask us about. And uh, so. I'm, I'm going to focus on the prescribed fire planning and implementation guide from the NWCG side of the house and then the, 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 the template that we use to go along with that guide. So I'm going to focus on four elements, um, the prescription, um, the organization and equipment, and holding and contingency. And to me, the, these, these all go together, actually, and I think that's why the compare weather can be quite useful for, for this burn plan. Um, Kind of enhancing your burn plan if you will so i have an example from southern idaho and i'm not going to go to ifty this i'm just going to show you some slides um but just to orient you just so as i show you the screen it, it'll make a little more sense for you so we're down here in the central part um south central part of idaho kind of towards the utah um, state line um so it's the box here at the bottom so that's where our burn unit is it's a couple thousand acres it's on the sawtooth national forest and it's, it's a, actually a burn unit that's in the process of being written, uh, the burn plan's in the process of being written. So I did just grab a Google Earth image just so you could get a feel for what the terrain looks like and um, how it sort of sits on the landscape. So we're looking due north, uh, up towards Twin Falls there, and this is sort of the shape of the burn unit as it sits on the slope. So it sort of has that north aspect. And I put the yellow circle on here because I'm gonna talk a little bit about some contingency planning um, on this sort of east side of the uh, of the burn unit. So you'll see that come up in a couple of the examples that I'm going to show you. So hopefully that just gets you oriented. Okay, so element seven, which is our prescription. Um, I like to sort of think of this as, as like I said, enhancing our, our burn plan. We sort of have the classic burn plan example you know we have a table we have our prescription parameters low moderate high or desired or optimum or whatever term you like to use in your burn plan um, and then we, we have our inputs you know our fuel moistures our wind directions etc and then we have our output um, you know rates of spread flame length um, etc and you know for for most of the burn plans i review and, and look at um, you know most folks use behave which is fine, you know, behaves a perfectly acceptable thing to use. I do think that IFTDIS offers, and of course we're using, you know, some of the algorithms from Flam Map. So these spatial modeling tools, um, I think provide a lot of additional information that um, to use these in burn plans, I think can help 
two, in two things. Um, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. And so streamlining some of the text that is written in these plans, I think we can use some of these screenshots um, from these applications to really to really beef that up and, and maybe write a little less text and use those pictures. Um, so numbers are good, text is okay, like we see here, um, but really pictures are better. And we all like to see this stuff on a map. So when we run these spatial tools in IFTDIS and use the compare, now if we if we were to take that same burn plan and we have our inputs, our numbers that we want to put into our prescription, now when we do our output part and we're looking at what is the flame length, what is the rate of spread, in this case, and sorry, it's a little blur, uh, uh, blurry in here. This is actually showing flame length at the bottom. Um, now we can see those next to each other. And now we can see our low, our moderate, and our high end of our prescription as it matches up with those inputs. Um, which to me, if I'm gonna sit down and talk to a line officer, or maybe I'm gonna confer with some of my colleagues on writing this prescription, this to me is a much better way to have that discussion as far as where is this fire behavior going to occur. And then it's gonna tie into those other pieces on holding, contingency, you know, things that I care about most as a, as a burn boss, you know, in my, you know, glasses half empty, worst case scenario world of being a burn boss, I want to know where things are going to cause me problems. And uh, doing this spatially certainly allows us to look at that. So that's, that's where I could see this uh, compare weather fitting nicely into the prescription element. The other thing you can do, and not to get in the weeds on the auto 97th, um, percentile kind of run, but in this case, so this is the same three outputs, uh, low, moderate, and high. And then I added that auto 97th on the end here. And if I'm if I'm working in an area that maybe it's new to me, maybe I, you know, it's a new job or something like that, or I'm I'm reviewing an old prescription, um, running that auto 97th at least gives you a starting point. A lot of times when we're teaching some of the burn boss classes and such, you know, people who are new to modeling, they're not sure where to start with, um, like, where do I get my fuel moistures from? Um, where, kind of where do I start? Everybody's familiar with 97th percentile weather as it applies to fire season and, and, and wildfire, you know, um, response. So using that to me at least gives everybody a, a level playing field as far as the starting and then building my prescription somewhat backwards, if you will. Um, maybe just one way to think about it, but using that compare weather and being able to look at it next to each other, you can see in this example, the high end of my prescription um, is actually fairly close to some of these auto 97 um, outputs. And so I might reconsider again what my the high end of my prescription um, if I if I really if that type of fire behavior is OK. And in case in some cases it might be. So that's another way to think about compare weather as it applies um, to the prescription. Then the next piece that ties to this, of course, is, is now I'm, as I'm writing my burn plan, based on my fire behavior, and this is, I think, sometimes an element that we overlook as it relates to a prescription, but how much stuff do I need? Um, and this should be tied to fire behavior, right? How, you know, I, I want to keep my, my, my burn in the box, if you will. Um, so how much stuff do I need to do that? And it states right here in the, in the implementation guide, you know, that we could, you can use this minimum organization needs could be, you could use it and run this fire behavior modeling type stuff, um, for the low and the high range of your prescription. And that should help inform, um, how you, how you organize and how you, uh, figure out what resources you're going to want. Now, not saying that the modeling is the gospel and it's because, you know, you get this type of fire behavior run, you absolutely have to have five hotshot crews and 20 engines and all that. But at least it gives you a starting point sort of back again to that worst case scenario situation. So this is an example of using element 11. And on the left, we have sort of the low end of the prescription. And what we used here is the MTT model to sort of game out a spot fire. So this is that east side of that burn unit that I showed you in the uh, Google Earth image. Um, and we ran the low, moderate, and high parts of our prescription. Now, this was a spot fire using a six hour burn period and wind directly out of the west. 
So you could use MCT to sort of game out, well, what would happen on the low end? What would happen on the high end of my prescription if I did have a spot fire in sort of that area of concern? And, and then perhaps this can help populate and at least guide you to, um, to resources that you might either want to have on hand or that you might want to have in your contingency plan. Um, so at least now we can put some pictures to our, to our, our numbers and our organization. Um, I think this paints a pretty good picture, um, even though it might be an extreme example, but, um, but we could use this to, to, to make, you know, line preparation and all, all kinds of things when it comes to holding and stuff. So that's another way to think about using the compare weather um, in a burn plan. And then the next piece is holding. Sorry, my, oopsie, I need to go backwards now. There we go. Uh, my holding plan um, is another place again. And again, in the, in the implementation guide, we talk about critical holding points and mitigation actions. So again, this is looking at rate of spread low, moderate, high, and I've indicated on my map here where I might see some holding concerns outside of my burn unit. Um, so that, that eastern uh, piece here is what I was showing you with the spot fire. So um, in my holding plan, I might, rather than write a whole bunch of text and have three paragraphs trying to explain where these holding concerns might be, how about just drop in an image from, from a, uh, a model run and, and literally just circle those areas and then a short caption in your burn plan um, can get you a long way to, to describing this element pretty well. And then last is contingency. And uh, again, so when you're thinking about resources, capabilities, low probability, but high consequence type of event, um, again, the guide, the implementation guide sort of points us using this spatial fire modeling um, to thinking hard about how to how to game out that uh, contingency um, plan. So again, this is looking at um, that spot fire scenario, a little different um, part of the burn unit here, looking at the south end. And this is the, uh, sorry, my other two images didn't show up there. There should have, shoot, there should, uh-oh. There we go. There should have been two other images in there with, um, with with that extreme example there on the south end. Anyway, I think you get the idea on, on where I'm going with the contingency plan is using the compare weather, looking at those different scenarios. Maybe you want to think about wind direction and if you have a wind shift or something. And again, you could do the same thing with the compare weather, change your wind around, hold your fuel moistures constant, and uh, and then game out some wind wind things that might cause you problems. So those are my four places where I think uh, the compare weather can really um, help enhance a burn plan. And uh, I'd love to see some folks try that and show us some examples. Um, so if you if you think you might try to use this down the road, please be in touch. We're, we're always curious to hear how, how folks are using it. Okay, so I am gonna turn it, um, or actually since I'm having trouble with my, let me see if I can get to the next slide, Bree. I might have to have. I can take the screen if that would assist you. And show okay. This. Yeah. I think I'm um, going to go do that, Caroline, because I'm. I don't know why my. I'm having some issues here. All right. Okay. Coming your way, Caroline. Sorry about that. Okay. I'll try to fix my bug here. So Bree is going to talk just a little bit about how we could use this compare weather stuff and maybe a, a couple of um, NEPA examples. Yeah, uh, that is what I'm going to do. I see it. Yeah, you're on the. You're not on presentation mode, but I can still see the slide. Oh. Uh, how about now? There you go. So yeah, I put together a couple slides just to demonstrate, um, maybe give you a couple little teasers of how you might be able to use this tool for NEPA planning. And I think for NEPA planning, we typically think of, um, you know, in, in terms of compare, I know my brain instantly goes to comparing 
treatment alternatives because that's a huge part of what we do in NEPA when we're evaluating effects of um, multiple treatment scenarios or alternatives um, with our team, our, our interdisciplinary team. You know, a lot of times we're looking at um, at spatial location of treatments on the landscape along with treatment types. Um, but I also think there's an application for this compare weather tool um, for NEPA. And so one way that that I looked at this in terms of NEPA is um, using in this example on the slide here shows this is a landscape fire behavior um, compare resource. So we've got three um, outputs from landscape fire behavior and you can see um, the names of those outputs are um, labeled with percentile conditions. So I looked at, you know, in this case, I'm honing in on maybe a couple treatments that are getting a lot of, um, you know, questioning, people maybe on the team are questioning, um, you know, the treatment type or, or location um, or possibly even just how, how effective, you know, are these treatments going to be um, over a, a range of different environmental conditions. So um, I looked at the 85th percentile, 90th percentile, and 97th percentile conditions um, and ran those through landscape fire behavior, honing in on maybe these couple kind of hot topic treatments to basically be able to display um, to the team, you know, that obviously under 85th percentile conditions, you know, these treatments are going to be very effective. But even at the 97th percentile end where we would have, you know, more extreme fire behavior, um, that these treatments are still going to be effective at meeting our objectives. And here in the text, you know, one of the objectives of um, this project was to uh, put treatments on the landscape that are going to reduce flame length and reduce crown fire potential. And so here it just demonstrates that, yeah, over a different different range of conditions, even up to our 97th percentile, these treatments are going to be effective um, to meet both of those objectives. And so the, the lower right hand corner also shows the crown fire um, reduction um, for this treatment, which was a, a broadcast burn that I um, projected out to be a four year post treatment. So even after four years, you know, you can see the effectiveness of those. So that's one way I think that you could you could use it. Um, if you want to advance to the next slide. Okay. <laughs> um, this one is a little bit more of kind of we talked a little bit about um, Kim talked a little bit about scenarios and and this is more of of that type of a case um, using the minimum travel time model for NEPA. Um, if you were maybe knew that you had you know, values in this case, the purple hash marks of the treatments. Um, again, I ran them through the different percentile conditions. Um, you know, how effective are, are the, is the placement of these treatments going to be in maybe um, protecting the, our values that we've identified in our NEPA as being a priority? Um, so, yeah, so the question being how will treatments impact fire movement across this landscape? Will these treatments? Um, protect our values that we're concerned about and, you know, hinder fire spread towards those values. So here we've got the arrival time grid on the main um, screen or the main screen capture and then the um, the rate of spread in the lower right hand corner. So the first, you know, 85th percentile condition, those um, scenario ignitions that I put on the landscape didn't even reach the treatment. So that's not a very good example there. Um, in terms of effectiveness, but then when you get into 90th percentile, you know, 97th percentile, you can see that, you know, we are, those treatments are definitely hindering spread um, when they hit hit those treatments. So um, just another way to help, you know, that your interdisciplinary teams, your agency administrators, um, you know, get a handle on, on why you're proposing the treatments you're proposing, you know, where you're proposing them, um, and how effective they'll be over a variety of of um, conditions. So uh, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this too. And, and I'm excited to, you know, get, have users get their hands on this and help us understand, you know, ways that they're using it in different types of planning um, too. So these are just a couple of examples that might kind of get you thinking about how you could use, use this in your NEPA planning. And that's it. I, that's what I had for NEPA. Cool, thanks, Bree. Yeah, that's great. Those are good examples. I like it. 
And again, if, if folks have other thoughts, if you think you might try to use this or get going on a project, please keep us posted. We, we do like to hear about how y'all are using this out there. So Caroline wants to do one example with our landscape burn probability model um, to show how compare could be used um, with that model. Yes, I do. <clears throat> one thing I want to point out while Bree's um, MTT compare example is up here in case you're kind of tilting your head sideways, um, trying to orient yourself. Um, the, the zoom to or the area of interest when you use MTT, um, it's taking the extent of that, the, the colored bands, you know, the burn period runs and zooming to that extent. So that's why your, your purple hash mark or your treatment areas are in slightly different locations in the thumbnails because it's using the, the full extent of that model run output. So on the left hand side, you know, it's the, the run isn't even reaching the treatments. Um, the center one, you know, it's creeping around the lower treatment and on the, the right hand one, it's, it's zoomed much farther out the treatments, you know, and showing the fire spreading around that lower treatment. So just a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, if you're looking at that, how to orient yourself when you're looking at the MTT thumbnails, um, it's a little bit harder to capture with MTT than some of the other model outputs. Uh, yeah, let's see. So for burn probability, I don't really have a, um, I just want to explain how it works and compare whether I don't have a, an applied example to show per se, but I have a slide and then I'll show you in the application because I think it's it's a little easier to, to understand when you're looking at the application. So with burn probability, um, if you haven't used it in IFTDIS before, this might not make um, a ton of sense to you, but for those of you that are familiar with burn probability, the way uh, IFTDIS um, presents the outputs is it's their binned based on percent of maximum. Um, so in the table view of your inputs, you'll see the maximum for each model run is listed as, as part of the display in the second to the last row. And then for comparison purposes, what it does is it selects the, um, the maximum of all the models being compared so that you're truly comparing um, apples to apples in your, your map and it, it bends it accordingly when it displays that on the map. And that's why, as I mentioned earlier, as you see in the layer list, the, the word compare is put in front of each one. If you were to open these up and I can show it in Map Studio, it will list the comparison max. And if you were to add, um, you know, one of these runs not used in the compare scenario, it would just use that individual runs maximum for display. Um, but when you're in a compare mode, it's going to use that burn probability maximum as the reference point for the binning for displaying all the outputs. Um, the other thing to note about this is that with burn probability, it's it's dependent on ignitions. So if you use that copy run like I showed, um, or when you're in the playground and you've already got an existing burn probability run that you want to compare against, when you get to ignitions, um, if you're in copy mode, it will default to use ignitions from a completed run and you can select it so that you, again, are comparing apples to apples. It's using the same um, ignition set of coordinates across your landscape as it runs these random ignitions across your landscape. So you're not varying that ignition file at all. You're actually using the same thing for compare. So if I, let me if this works, if I drag over, are we looking at some compare burn probability thumbnails now? We are. Yes, we sure are. Oh, it's good to have positive affirmation. Okay. So, so yeah, one way you can do this, you can see um, the files I've selected um, turning on and off and you can reorder them. Um, if I hover over it, it's just as easy to see. So this is a, a west wind scenario for this landscape. I've got an entire district in the purple hash marks here and then the bend probabilities now that are all been um, similarly showing so I can immediately see that I've ordered them here sort of from the coolest to the hottest um, model runs but I'm really just varying one or two things with each model run so this is a west wind um, this one is a north wind this one is a south wind and then this one is a, is a good example of um, if I don't condition the fuel moistures ahead of time, you get a lot more um, heat in this particular run. This is like a flat 
area, some flats in the center of this district with some ridges or mountains along the outside that are more vegetative where that fire behavior is occurring. Um, but in choosing, you know, burn probability to do exposure and hazard assessment, it's important to, to capture your worst case scenario. Um, and since the model that IFTDIS runs only uses a single set of inputs you want to play around, um, knowing your worst case scenario and just make sure that you're capturing it by, by trying different scenarios until you get one um, that matches what you uh, can rectify in your own mind with what is truly a worst case scenario um, and matches up with the, the historic weather, or the, the weather conditions during um, problem fires in your area. So that's an application of the burn probability. Again, I just wanted to point out that, that maximum here. And then if you view it in the map, um, to show again the thumbnails and the layer list populate. And I just wanna show you when I open um, or expand rather these different layers, it will list the, uh, the burn probability max here as, as the one that's the, the highest one for all these different scenarios. So you can sort of see that, you can turn them on and off, um, but if I were to expand each one, it would have that same uh, comparison maximum displaying. So again, you can use the same functionality of selecting um, different ones to look at, swiping to look at your fuels, uh, using the identify tool um, to capture you know, the different burn probabilities and what's going on underneath. Burn probability is its own whole sort of webinar training session that we have available, but I wanted to show how the compare is also used for that model. So with that, we just have a few minutes left, so I think I'll leave it for any questions or any wrap up that, that Kim wants to do. Yeah, thanks, Caroline. Um, I don't see any new questions in the uh, in our question box here, but um, Craig did ask about um, when I was showing some of the sort of spot fire stuff in the burn plan idea. He asked if we had anything uh, kind of similar to contain, like behave has, and uh, we actually do not have a contain module in IFTDIS at this point in time. Um, so if you wanted to actually use that like it exists in behave you'd have to go to behave and, and run that contain module and then take those numbers and, and use those in your in your plan so uh, but it's you know I, I don't know a lot about the contain module and 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 how how quote, good it does etc but i think that coupled with some of these mtt outputs um, my guess would probably give you some pretty good information to uh to illustrate you know your those the sort of contingency needs. So that's a good question though. With perhaps in the future we'll we'll be able to add some of those uh behave type of features, but we don't have them in if you just just yet. So does anyone else have if anyone else has any other questions, you can throw toss them into our uh our box chat box here. We will post the recording here of course and we will post the question and answers as well. That'll be uh, linked there in the IFTDIS recording um, part of the Help Center. So um, we encourage everybody to either watch the recording or share it with your friends and uh, let folks know what we're up to. Other than that, I think we're just about to hit the top of the hour. So any other thoughts, Bree or Caroline? The only thought I have is that if you're, um, we're hoping that this is going to bring in a little bit of a, um, more of a burn plan preparation component, as, as Kim highlighted to the user community. We've done a lot of development with exposure and risk um, that that are also um, super useful at both at the project level and the unit level, but the, the, ap the application for some of the field folks at the burn planning level is I think really coming to fruition with some of this compare weather. So spread the word if you think it's going to be useful um, to folks that you work with to check this out. Great, yeah. Thanks, Caroline. Bree, any final thoughts before we end our uh, presentation? Yeah, nothing for me. All right. Well, thanks everybody for attending, and uh, we'll definitely get some information out to you on where to find the recording and. Uh, like I said, there will be a survey that pops up here as soon as we end the webinar. So if 
If you have a minute or two, there's five short questions. If you don't mind filling that out for us, we'd sure appreciate it. And uh, we'll look for you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. One, have a great week. One thing I'll add here on the questions, uh, as far as using it for smoke, we don't have anything in IFTDIS currently, though we do have some placeholders in the planning cycle uh, where we would like to address smoke more specifically in the future. Gotcha. Thanks, Josh. I just saw that question pop in. So yes, thank you for answering that. Um, like Josh said, we are we are always have things on our list of development, and smoke is definitely of interest to a lot of folks. So um, it's it's quote on the list for the future. Um, and uh, if if we get closer in that, we'll certainly uh, pass that along to you all when we when we're able to um, tie into that stuff. Um, but yes, yeah, someone mentioned Blue Sky, and of course, those guys have some great tools that are out there for now. So in the future, we hope to be tied into those. Um, we'll just cross our fingers that, that we get there. All right, everybody. Well, thanks again. Have a great week, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Appreciate it.